start p and &E session. I'm going to pay respect to the Buddha, reciting Bali stanza. Budo bodaya di 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 dan doyo damataya sa. Damataya dan do damante no wa dranaya sa. Nibudo nibana taya dan loka dranami. Loka dreno loka tuma i kuza ya te su pseto mudo. Yo na go buda na ga miro ya di a se indi a to ta che nya swa pya di. Udo di sali in kuro rai tu ten ti mien do mu vi pse yue. Bodaya sa cha thai ta du bo bo lu do ko tu ten le ti cha pa si jin chu nga le ka. Dhan do kuro ka bi yin chi do mu vi pse yue. Dhammataya sa cha thai ta du bo bo lu do ko tu me yin ki le ta pu nyi cha pa si jin nga le ka. Dino wa tandaya na wangara chango Kutan tau chao kuro ra yao pi pi yue ta liye Trena ya sa kuro ta tu cho thai tu ro ne bu ta wang ma ve kando Kutan tau chao yao cha ba zi jin cho nga la gao Nibuto ki li ta pri ni ba wen san yo te Kuro rai yi nyi do mu yi pshe yue Niba na ta ya sa kuro ta tu we ni lu ro pu ka te nyi ja ba zi jin chu nga la gao Dhamma ni zin li na dhamma sa ku Di 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 guru na shi ta mya ta pshe O cha ro mu khe ba bi yi. Lo ka dara na lo ka tu ma yi ko za ya ta su pya to mu do. Ta na ka bu ta na ka mi ro ya di a se yi di a to ta tu mya swa pya gu. Na mi na ma mi ko no na lo to zong pya ong pya. Mangu shu yi ka do mya nu la su mu yi. Shikhu u nyo pa yi mya swa pya mya swa pya. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> um, so, anybody has a question, please? <clears throat> I'm asking this question on behalf of my sister. The first question is, is it rude if we address Tao's ideology as Bhante? And the second question is... Is it rude to address Tao's ideology as Bhante? And the second question is, the Buddha's dispensation lasts for like 5,000 years. Does it mean if one practice diligently, one can achieve a high stage within this time, this time span? And the third question is, what I want to ask, is breaking promises considered as lying? And what is the bad karma for doing that? <clears throat> so, 
the what that we address our senior bhikkhu as bande. So this is the word that appear in the Pali text directly. Awuso and Bande. Awuso Ayasama Ayasamanto Ayasamanta Bande Awuso. So all these are the usage that appear in the Pali text. So Awuso is a way of addressing to the junior bhikkhu. Pandi is a, a way of addressing the senior bhikkhu. So for Pausiaro, as he is very senior, so very, very old in age, and very old in Wasa. For that reason, even though Buddhists, people from different countries, they don't understand what is the meaning of Seado, they always address Seado. Maybe you should learn it, I think. So, it is not rude. Anyway, for Myanmar Seado, they are familiar with Seado. <laughs> so Bande is what they hear only when they communicate with foreigner bhikkhus. For example, my disciple, so those who are not very junior, not very much different in Wasa with me, so they address me Bande. Some also with respect, they use Myanmar word, Seado. So it is not rude anyway. So the way that a certain bhikkhu who live in Myanmar, they are very used to with Seado. If it is it's very senior, if he calls Seado, it's also good. From your standpoint, as you are layman, Bande to Pau Seado is not very suitable. Okay? This is for the first question. For second question, Buddha dispensation will last for 5,000 years. So Samma Viharyon, this is the words of the Buddha. Samma when Viharyon. <coughs> if bhikkhus are going to practice well, there will be no absent of arahant in this world. So we should not Maybe talk much about 5,000 years. So this is what appears in the commentary, but there is some contrary. But we should take the words of the Buddha. What the Buddha said, in this dispensation of the Buddha, if there are bhikkhus who live well, who practice well, there will be no absence of arahant in this Buddha's dispensation. But Buddha didn't mention how long. Okay? So suppose a certain bhikkhu has practiced meditation diligently and then he attained or he attained a sort of panna. He became a sort of panna, first noble person. And then he, he teach other bhikkhus for the attainment of first path and fruition knowledge. This is a way of living well. This is a way of practicing well what the Buddha meant, Sammaviharyo. 
In the same way, a certain bhikkhu has practiced meditation dilig diligently, and then he attained second path and fruition knowledge. He became a second noble person. So then, those who have attained first path knowledge and those who have attained second path knowledge, they know how to teach others for the attainment of first path knowledge, second path knowledge. This is a way of living well. This is a way of practicing well as a bhikkhu. If a certain bhikkhu has attained third path and fruition knowledge, so he became a and Nagami, the third noble bhikkhu. As he has attained the third noble root, he knows how to teach others, how to make attain, how to attain the third path and fruition knowledge. This is the way bhikkhus live well in this Buddha's dispensation. And another bhikkhu who have attained arahant path and fruition knowledge. If a certain bhikkhu has attained arahant path and fruition knowledge, they know how to teach others for the attainment of arahant path and fruition knowledge. In this way, if bhikkhus are practicing well in this Buddha's dispensation, there will be no lack of arahant in this Buddha dispensation. But if bhikkhus are not practicing, there is nobody who attain path and fruition knowledge because they don't follow the words of the Buddha. So what did the Buddha set? What did the Buddha expound? It appeared in the Anguttara Nikaya, the first chapter. If a bhikkhu if a certain bhikkhu teach, teaches Adhamma as Dhamma, Dhamma as Adhamma, they are those who are humming for the benefit of many. They are those who are doing for the better of many. They are those who are accumulating many unwholesome karma. They are promoting for the disappearance of the Buddha's teaching. Who? Those who are teaching Dhamma as Adhamma. Adhamma as Dhamma. They are those who are promoting for the disappearance of the teachings of the Buddha. So the Buddha said, Bhikkhus develop concentration. The one who is concentrated knows and sees the Dhamma, the truth as they really are. And a certain Bhikkhu teaches no need to develop concentration. Without having developed concentration, it is possible to know and see the Dharma as they really are. So nobody get the opportunity to practice for the development of concentration. What I want to share with all of you according to my experiences. Along the way I'm doing propagation work. So I went I've been to many different countries. So I met with those who have very good parami. Before they meeting with me, they don't know that they have very good parami. Why? Because they never get the they never get the opportunity to practice the way the Buddha taught. Mostly nowadays many people are practicing meditation in this world, according to the traditions of the teacher. Mostly not according to the Buddha. Because of this reason, so they, they are destroyed. So the attainment of absorption concentration has been destroyed. Why? They have never heard how to develop concentration. They are taught how to practice vipassana. But vipassana meditation that has been taught nowadays, many are not according to the Buddha. Mostly they are according to the traditions of the well-known teachers. Because of this reason, those who didn't get the opportunity to develop concentration according to the Buddha's teaching, they don't know, they didn't get the opportunity to know that they have accumulated very good karma in the past. Only when I taught them Anapanasati, 
So some, within a few days, they could develop very good concentration. So they felt very happy. So there is one, one lady who is a doctor in Myanmar. She practiced other meditation methods. But at the end of the retreat, she was very happy to go back home because she felt very pain. But I taught him just maybe five months ago in Myanmar. So within 10 days, she could attain first jhana. And she came to know that she had very good parami. But before, she never seen such light because nobody taught her to focus on one point. Just she was taught to pay attention to every present object. So the mind is wandering, like the, the mind is like wandering. It is very suit to our nature, right? So our habit of mind is taking many different objects. If a certain teacher taught like this, so very happy, but no way to develop concentration. Why? To develop concentration is to develop one-pointed mind on one object. That's why if someone teach Adhamma as Dhamma, so they are promoting for the disappearance of the Buddha's teaching. How to make the teachings of the Buddha disappear? Concentration will disappear. If there is no concentration, so the attainment of path and fruition has been destroyed. There will be no noble person in this world. The attainment of path and fruition has been destroyed. Knowing and seeing the Dharma as they really are has been destroyed. That's why if bhikkhus are not practicing well, so there will be no noble person in this dispensation. You get it? Okay, so we don't need to talk about 5,000 Yes. Okay? So another question is promising. Promising. If you break your promise, is it telling lies? <laughs> so what do you think? So don't easily promise anybody. Okay? So if someone so tell us, please, please, say, please tell me, not to go there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't go there. And then you go there. <laughs> because you want to make easy. But never, never. Don't be the one who, who say something easily. So if you can't do, please don't promise. So if we say easily, the other party will be very ha happy on the spot. But if you don't really do, th that person, another party, the other party will not respect you. You destroy the respect of others towards you. Okay, this is the first thing that you are going to encounter. Another thing, they will not believe you. So this is also a bad reputation. That's why better I will try my best but I will not promise. If you are not sure that you can do or not, I will try my best but I, I can't promise you. Okay, so if someone asks you something to do, not a way of promising but a way you can avoid something undesirable you should adjust your way of speaking, only then it will be fine. You get it? So t if, you, if you promise really, and then if you don't do according to your promise, so this is, for example, you promise you will not tell lines. Okay? And then you tell lines. So you promise. So I will not kill 
UK. So the time you make a promise, you're very serious. Suppose with determination, you keep a promise. Yes, I will do. You have no cheating. Okay, in your mind, you you have no desire, no intention to cheat. But with good intention, you think that you can do. That's why you promise. After that, you cannot do. According to time and condition, you can't do. So at that time, you should explain why you can't do at that time. But anyway, giving promise is what we need to be, what we need to consider. If it is not necessary, don't promise. Okay. So, so, if like one person practice diligently in one life, can he attain our hardship? <laughs> if you have accumulated enough barami to attain our hardship in this very life. If you diligently practice for the whole life, when past karma and present karma are met at that time, it is possible. But if you are the one who has, who had accumulated in the past, accumulated good parami for the attainment of first path and fruition knowledge, if you try in this very life. You are going to attain first path and fruition knowledge when the past accumulated karma and present karma are met. In the same way, some they have accumulated barami for the attainment of second path knowledge. They have enough barami to attain this if past and present karma are met. It is possible too. Anyway, thinking about the attainment of arhanship is so far very far for you. So very far for all of you. Now, first of all, please try to reach nearest goal. So it is to develop concentration, because the Buddha. Guarantee, the one who is concentrated will know and see the Dharma, the truth, as they really are. If it is so, in opposite, the one who is not concentrated will not know, will not see the Dharma, the truth, as they really are. So, if you want to realize nibbana, first of all, you need concentration. Only then, you will know the first noble truth. You will know the second noble truth. And first noble truth and second noble truths are the objects of vipassana. Only at that time you can practically engage practicing vipassana, contemplating impermanent suffering, non-self, seeing the arising and perishing of conditioned dharma. Only when you can contemplate impermanent suffering, non-self, seeing the arising and perishing of conditioned dharma, such as rupa. Nama, Rupa Nama together, and each Kanda, Kanda and Kanda, five Kanda together, past, present, future, near, far, both internally, externally, or about mentality, both wholesome and unwholesome. All these are your object of practicing meditation, Vipassana meditation. If you engage practicing diligently. At a certain time, insight knowledge will mature. So, when the insight knowledge mature, you will be instructed by your teachers not to pay attention on the arising, but to emphasize seeing the perishing only. 
By doing so, you will attain the knowledge equanimity towards formation, which is Sankarupa Kanyana. It is very close to path knowledge. At the time, if you engage practicing vipassana, contemplating impermanent suffering, non-self, seeing the perishing of conditioned dharma in every four postures, you can't know in any posture you can attain path knowledge. So if you attain the first path and fruition knowledge, you became a sort of panna. You prevent yourself from falling into four, four states. If you try to reach there, I think I'm very happy, you will be very happy. So now, please don't think much about arahant attainment, okay? Very far for you, I think, now. Okay? <laughs> Good evening, Lani. I would like to ask two questions. One of them is that um, I understand that uh, we should all practice um, um, the concentration on the breath for Anapanasati. But I heard that the, because the Buddha taught a lot of uh, meditation methods, there is also like those um, um, looking at the organs, those kind of things. So my question is that um, when will I know if I feel certain method and then I should move on to try another one? Um, there is one question. And then you mean <laughs> when should you change meditation object? Um, yes, like if I really cannot uh, do the breath, that kind. <laughs> and the second question is that... Um, after only after first question, second question, followed by. Good? Yes. Okay. So, I have shared with all of you in my Dharma talk in the three days retreat. So, we teach almost all the 40 kinds of meditation objects to our disciples. Because of this reason, if necessary, for those who can't practice anathana meditation successfully, even those he or she spend, spend enough time practicing anathana meditation, if we see that meditators encounter difficulty with anapana meditation, so we consider what to teach. So you cannot make a decision by yourself. You need the guidance of the teacher. Also, the teacher must be the one who knows how to practice them. So, if you practice under the guidance of a teacher who didn't teach the way the Buddha taught, so you will encounter difficulty. But sometimes some meditators, they complain us. Pande, why do you teach almost all the 40 types of meditation object to meditators? Just after having developed uh, anapana absorption concentration, is it not enough? So I told them, yes, enough. You can proceed to insight meditation if you don't want to continue other meditation objects. But we have our reason. 
Nowadays, even though meditators could develop absorption concentration with anapana, sometimes we see that their parami is not very strong. Their concentration also not very strong yet. Even though they could attain absorption concentration, we see that we need them to we need to teach them for the development of deeper concentration. If we let them practice anapana for a long time, just anapana, so our human mind doesn't enjoy with one object, right? And then we change 32 parts of the body, the concentration getting stronger. And then based on like a, based on skeleton, the color, white color of the bone. We teach them white casino. So we, because of them, they attain first, second, third, and fourth white casino absorption concentration. At that time, they, all the meditators, they reported, oh, my white casino absorption concentration is much better than Anapana. In this way, we make them understand how important and we make their concentration getting deeper. This is one reason. So if we get the opportunity to practice all the other Samatha meditation objects, their concentration getting deeper. The stronger the concentration, the better the penetration for that reason. So another reason, if they are bhikkhus, ordained persons, one day as they are bhikkhu, they, are, they can't avoid helping Buddhist people. One day they will be asked, one day please teach meditation. I want meditation, I want to practice meditation at that time. They need to practice, they need to teach lay devotee or they are junior bhikkhus. So according to my teaching experiences, some, they have accumulated good parami with anapana in their past. So in this very life, if they get the opportunity to practice anapana, they could develop easily. For those practitioners, so anapana is very good. But for some, with anapana, they encounter difficulty. Even to focus on the breath for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, is uneasy. Even time passed, 2 months, 3 months, they could not focus on the breath well. So if the teacher, teachers are those who understand how to teach just Anapana meditation object. How can they teach their disciples? How can they help their disciples? So at that time, if teachers are those who know how to teach other meditation objects, at that time, they change teaching other meditation objects. Sometimes we teach four elements meditation. So what I want to share with all of you, so among my disciples, so I have experienced one meditator from Korea. So she practiced Anapana for two months, diligently, five sitting a day. But she could not maintain focusing easily on the breath. She encountered difficulty focusing on the breath. So two months. Already she practiced for two months. At that time, she would like to change the meditation object. At that time, along the way, I was teaching. When she reported, I observed. In her report, I noticed she felt the characteristics of elements in her body more clearly. For that reason, I thought it was 
ten years ago, I think. I thought four elements may be suitable for her. And I taught her four elements meditation at that time. Even though she encountered much difficulty with Anapana, for four elements, within one week, she could successfully practice. So for some, we change teaching, like Asina. Some, they could manage to develop like Asina meditation successfully. So in this way, it is very helpful. It is a way of sustaining the teachings of the Buddha. So we should hand it down from one generation to another in this way. Otherwise, the teachings of the Buddha will be destroyed or disappear easily. That's why not only the teachers but also all the lay devotees need to go hand in hand. So even though the teacher is teaching, there is nobody who practice. How can we sustain? Okay? And then the next question is that I want to ask is I I read that um, actually the Buddha didn't taught Abhidhamma, but it was um, added by the senior monk um, during those uh, Buddhist council when they added it. So, but then um, we are always told to learn what is directly taught by the Buddha. So that's my question. How should we um, handle it? Um, Who told you that Abhidhamma is not taught by the Buddha? I, I, I think I read in some books. I mean, they those, those um, writers, they read a lot of sutta and then they say that... Something that is compiled ...monks or during the Buddhist council <laughs> and added in into the Tipika, is it, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So here, what I want to share with all of you, friendly, in a friendly manner, will be good for all of us. Okay? So, nowadays, in the Buddhist country, like Myanmar, Thailand. So in Thailand, a certain group didn't accept Abhidhamma. They also don't accept commentary too. They emphasize learning or studying just Pali Canon. They don't accept commentary and Abhidhamma. Who are they? They are those who don't learn. Mostly, forest tradition, they don't accept Abhidhamma and commentary. Do they learn Pali Canon? Not all. So, the half. Another group, they accept Abhidhamma in commentary. They are those who learn Pali, commentary, and Abhidhamma. So, what I want to share with all of you, to be able to translate, interpret Pali Canon properly, we need the help of commentary. So, in times of the Buddha, when the Buddha expounded the Dhamma, he, the Buddha, is the one who has omniscient knowledge, 
who knows individual accumulated barami. The one who knows what meditator has practiced in their past. To which extent? Buddha is the one who knows how to teach the direct object for individual. That's why for the Buddha, he can open the heart of everybody. Or he can support directly to the barami of individual. That's why in times of the Buddha, those who met with the Buddha are those who had accumulated barami along the way. The Bodhisattva was fulfilling barami. At that time, with the Buddha, enough. But sometime, sometime, Buddha expounded the Dhamma. Listeners, they didn't understand well. At that time, they approached those very senior Mahatera, those who know well the wish of the Buddha. At that time, they explained more detail what the Buddha taught. So it is commentary. So since Buddha's time, there exists this way of explanation. So in times of the Buddha, so they handed down from one generation to another verbally. Here you may feel doubt about if they are, they have handed down the teachings of the Buddha verbally, how can they maintain? So from your ordinary point of view, you will consider, you will think in this way. In times of the Buddha, many noble bhikkhus, almost all the arahant, when, when they attain arahant path and fruition knowledge, they attain bhati sambhida jnana. Bhati sambhida jnana? How to translate? Analytical knowledge. So with this attainment of with the attainment of analytical knowledge, Bhati Sambhira Jnana, they are those who know the Tipitaka without committing into memory. With this attainment, they know the teachings of the Buddha. They don't need to commit into memory like all of us. Okay? That's why they can hand it down from one generation to another. Pali Canon and also Miscellaneous teaching taught by the Buddha sometimes, sometimes by the great disciples, chief disciples. So these are handed down in a form of commentary. Okay? So we are fortunate because of commentary, we know how to teach all of you. So, suppose Buddha used the same word at this. Buddha used a certain Pali word in a certain discourse. And then Buddha used this same word in another Sutta. But the meanings are not the same. So, in the first Sutta, the meaning is one. But in the another sutta, the meaning is another. So it is explained by the commentary, commentator. Commentators are those who know the, the wish of the Buddha very well. So if we don't learn commentary, we cannot interpret the words of the Buddha properly. We cannot interpret the way we want. The words of the Buddha, the teachings of the Buddha, is intended to, the Buddha taught the Dharma with the intention to realize the Dharma. 
all this Dharma is for the realization of the Dharma. As you know, when we read a poem, the same poem, when we read, different people read, what happened? We interpret the way we understand, right? Why? There is no definite meaning in it. But the teachings of the Buddha cannot be translated as we like. Now what happened? Those who don't accept commentary, they interpret the teaching, the Pali Canon, the way they like. Unknowingly, it becomes their own commentary. Who should be relied who should who can be relied on? Who is reliable? Those who know the teachings of the Buddha, those who are those who are arahant in times of the Buddha, or nowadays ordinary foolish disciple. Sorry for my word. Who should we, we rely on? For me I will rely on the commentators of those days. They know very well. Why do I say? I will share with all of you. There is a Nubada Sutta directly taught by the Buddha. It is a Sutta in which the Buddha praised the quality of the Venerable Sariputta. So the quality of the, the capability and the quality of the Mahamogalana, Venerable Mahamogalana, was well known because he is he has very he has a he has very good supernatural power. So he was foremost among those who have attained supernatural power. So sometime he went to the celestial realm, he met with the celestial beings and he asked, What is the karma that makes you reborn here? And why you have a lot of followers? And what is your karma? Asking? Taking the answer? Venerable Mahamogalana came down the human realm. He expounded, he shared the Dharma with human beings. So in this way, human beings came to know about karma and its result. Sometimes the Venerable Mahamogalana went to the hell and then so make no karma and its result. Why they are suffering then. So, came back to human realm and then expounded this profound Dharma to the lay people. So, Mahamogalana, Venerable Mahamogalana was well known. But, for about Venerable Sariputra, not that many knew because of his great wisdom not many knew about. So Buddha praised the Venerable Ma Sariputra. Venerable Sariputra is the one who can discern Chaita and Jitisika, consciousness and associated, associative mental factors one by one. So commentary explain, not because Venerable Sariputra had very sharp wisdom, he could discern consciousness and associated mental factors one by one. Just because he could discern base and object, that's why he could discern mentality one by one. 
why did he why could he listen because he could listen base and object if I say base and object do you understand you don't understand right or you are there okay base me now I you see me you all see me because of eye sensitivity so eye sensitivity is the sensitivity to which visible object can impinge on on which the visible object can impinge so because of ear sensitivity we hear the sound sound can impinge on the ear sensitivity visible object can impinge on eye sensitivity eye sensitivity is base Visible object is the object. Okay? Sound is the object. Ear sensitivity is the base. If you can discern these two together, you can discern the mentality. It is not explained in the in that sutta, Anubhara Sutta. It is explained in the commentary. We teach in this way to meditators. Meditators realize the Dharma as they really are. They can discern theta and jidisika, consciousness and associative mental factors one by one. What, why can we teach? Because of commentary. Commentators are those who know how to practice. Their explanations are really very great. Now we can teach not because of the Buddha, but because of the commentator. Because in the Pali Canon, Buddha didn't explain detail. Because in times of the Buddha, those who practice under the guidance of the Buddha are those who have full faith barami along with the Bodhisattva. They have practiced under the bodhis under the guidance of Bodhisattva in many existences. Buddha didn't need to explain very much, very detailed. Okay? Another the question, the answer is not yet complete. <laughs> okay? So another thing is Abhidhamma. Those who don't accept Abhidhamma are very unfortunate. They are unfortunate being among the Buddhists. Very, very bad. For, for us, because of Abhidhamma, we partially understand that Buddha is omniscient. Okay? No one can teach this Abhidhamma. Very deep and profound. So it didn't explain about a person. It explained about universal truth, which is true all the time. It is not related to just humans. It is related to living things and non-living things. It talks about ultimate truth. It is explained only in the Abhidhamma. Another thing? So... After Buddha enlightened as a Buddha, Buddha, in a certain rain retreat, Buddha didn't spend Vasa in the human realm. Buddha went to the celestial realm. Buddha expounded the Abhidhamma. Buddha chose to teach in the celestial realm. What is the reason? Buddha never taught Abhidhamma directly in the human realm. This is true. Why? The Abhidhamma need to be explained continuously, non-stop. It needs three months time. So, the celestial beings, their lifespan is very long. So, one realm, in celestial realm, one of the celestial realm, 50 years in celestial realm is, sorry, one day in celestial realm is equal to 50 years in human realm. Another lifespan, another, the lifespan of another celestial realm, 100 years in human realm is one day in celestial realm. So three months. Is it long? For them, can sit. For human, if he, if we teach for three months, Dharma speaker also will die. 
You all will die too. <laughs> okay? Now also, today only two hours. If I can, if I give more than this, you all will complain me. Okay? Cannot. But, but, Buddha is perfect, not only in his capability, but also in his accompany too. So every day, as Buddha is not a celestial being, he need to take his me every day. So every day, he came down to human realm again. Okay? So Venerable Sariputra, every day went to meet and went to take care. And so from the worldly point of view, he became an attendant of the Buddha at the time. Every day, Buddha came down, creating another, creating the Buddha. Buddha create another Buddha in celestial realm, continuously giving Dhamma talk. Okay? Continuously, continuously explaining Abhidhamma there, but because of his supernatural power, he can came down to human realm. And then he expounded Abhidhamma to the Venerable Sariputra, not brief, not detail, middle. Okay? Oh, sorry, briefly. Briefly expa explained by the Buddha. And then Venerable Sariputra taught his 500 disciples, those who will be a bed. Okay? So, in, in one of the existence, so 500 beds, beds. Uh, beds, they are living in the cave. So, one bhikkhu is chanting Abhidhamma. So, those beds, they very appreciate because of this karma, they are those who could get the opportunity to hear the Abhidhamma in the human realm with the care of Venerable Sariputra? When the Venerable Sariputra explained, not very detailed, but in detail, a little bit detail, so he can explore what he had learned from the Buddha because of his sharp wisdom. Okay? So, to be able to attain the first insight knowledge. What is the first insight knowledge? The knowledge of discerning ultimate mentality and materiality. This is the first insight knowledge. Ultimate materiality. How many Buddha taught? Altogether, 28. It was taught not in the Suttana, only in the Abhidhamma. Those who reject Abhidhamma, they destroy for the attainment of the first insight knowledge. Also, mentality, ultimate mentality, so for about their consciousness and associated consciousness. All these are explained in the Abhidhamma. So those who don't accept the Abhidhamma, they lost all this opportunity. Even for the attainment of the first insight, knowledge has been destroyed by those who condemn, who say, please don't accept Abhidhamma. Abhidhamma is not the teachings of the Buddha. They are those who are teaching Dhamma is a Dhamma. So they will destroy the teachings of the Buddha. So they destroy the possibility, the attainment of the possible attainment of individual. Okay? Another. Now you're finished. So please read the teachings of the Buddha, what you call Pali Kanon, directly. English translation or whatever, you can read. Or if you like Chinese, also you can read in Chinese. 
After that, please study Abhidhamma. Thoroughly, after that, please go and read the same sutta again. Your understanding will be improved at that time. Why? Abhidhamma guides you how to understand properly. Okay? Sometimes we are asked the question what we have never experienced in our life. The question that what we have never learned in our life. And we are not afraid. Why? If I give an answer within the boundary of a bidema, there is nothing which is wrong. A bidema tell universal truth. Because of a bidema, we came to know that Buddha is omniscient. Okay, Westerners uh, they don't accept a bidema. Many Westerners they don't. Many Westerners they don't accept commentary. So, I I will not force you to accept, but. If you don't accept, you will be very unfortunate being. Okay? Be good. <laughs> Evening, Monday. Uh, so in the uh, Sutta Satipatthana, uh, it talks about the four foundations of mindfulness. So. Uh, isn't it true that uh, we should have this foundation first before we understand Abhidharma better? Or because you talk about body, which you really learned in the body contemplation, feelings, mental states, or mind state. So, can you help us to link this training, teaching, and Abhidharma? Or by learning Abhidharma, we fulfill all the four Satipatthanas? If you have time, if you have time, you can learn a bit more before you practice. But I want, what I want to share with all of you, since I did provocation work, now already over 16 years, I've been teaching local people and foreigners. Mostly those who could practice meditation well are those who ordain when they become adults. They renounced the world because of sense of urgency. They have life experiences. They see the fault and the danger of what they have done. That's why not like many ordained persons, those, those who ordained since they were young, many, they have no life experiences. Sometimes even they are longing for what lay people are doing. Okay? For that reason, many of those what I have taught meditation practice, they have no any Abhidhamma knowledge. They have no Pali knowledge. Because of their past accumulated Barami, sense of urgency arose in them. So they could renounce the world. And because of seeing the fault and the danger of sensuality, their mind is powerful, strong, to engage practicing meditation. For those who don't see the fault and the danger of sensuality, their mind inclined to enjoy the sensuality more than practicing meditation. Because of this reason, they cannot spend long time practicing meditation. So, we taught them how to develop concentration with the explanation taught by the Buddha. So, they hear explanation from us. This is a way of learning. And then they go and practice. This is practical way of understanding. And then they attain absorption concentration. We taught them all. So, Learning and practicing go together. After having developed concentration, we taught them how to know, how to see ultimate mentality and materiality with detailed explanation. So they, they learn from us, and also we have manual book. Also we let, we let them read the part that they should need, they should read. The parts that we need to explain, 
we, we explain them and then they practice. As they have developed concentration, they know and see the Dharma as they really are. So they know 28 kinds of Rupa. They know Chaita and Jitasika, consciousness and associated mental factors. Directly with their insight knowledge, not just learning. Scholars, they have a lot of doubt and confusion. Is it possible? Really that we can know and see them? Because they have learning knowledge only. After that, so we taught them how to practice dependent origination. So we need to explain them. This is learning knowledge. And then they practice practically. This is direct knowledge. And then they practice vipassana. So at that time, so here I need to explain more. What is Kaya Nupasana? What is Chaita Nupasana? What is Vedana Nupasana? What is Dhamma Nupasana? So Buddhists, our we Buddhists talk very much about four satipatthana. And also almost all the teachers, they teach also four satipatthana. But you need to know how to practice four satipatthana properly. Those who know Rupa and Nama, they can practice four satipatthana properly. So you see, as I explained in my Dharma talk the day before yesterday, the time I explained how to practice materiality meditation. If you practice four elements meditation the way taught by the Buddha, Finally, you will break your body down into very tiny small particles. So in each particle, there are earth, water, fire, wind, color, smell, taste, nutritive essence, life faculty, and sensitivity. Eight, nine, or ten kinds of ultimate mater materiality need to be discerned thoroughly. So, when you know, when you see, ultimate materiality, door by door. And if you do detail method, you need to de do more detail, part by part, 32 parts of the body. As, at that time, you see your whole body just as a small tiny particles. As you have analyzed, ultimate materiality exists in those small particles. You can go, you can Pay attention to the ultimate materiality. At that time, if you walk with close your eyes, you, you see your whole body just small tiny particles which are rising and perishing rapidly. At that time, if you contemplate seeing the arising and perishing of ultimate materiality together with the small particles, at that time you are practicing Kaya Nupasana. Okay? Those who deny Abhidhamma, they are unfortunate. They cannot understand how to practice Kaya Nupasana. Okay? And also, according to the Buddha's teaching, after you pay attention, after you emphasize contemplating, seeing the arising and perishing of ultimate materiality with the small particles, you need to pay attention Nama. Only then you complete Kaya Nupasana. So as I have told all of you, so in the realm where there are five clinging aggregates, mentality arises based on materiality. So you can descend the mental mentality which arises in the form of cognitive process. Remember what I share with what I have shared with all of you? When meditators hear the sound, sound impinges to the ear door. At the same time, it impinges to the bawanga, mind door. At that time, cognitive process arise. So, in a form of cognitive process, as I have demonstrated what my meditators reported. Okay? So, in, in each mind movement, this is each mind movement. In every mind movement, there is consciousness and its associated mental factors. So, in every mind movement, there is there is feeling. Okay? In every mind movement, there is feeling. Some with pleasant, some with equanimity, 
So you need to see this feeling to be able to practice Vedana Lupasana. Okay? So they are arising and perishing rapidly all the time. Only by only you only when you see them you can practice Vedana Lupasana. Okay? So Vedana can't arise alone. So the nature of mentality, they arise together, they perish together. They have the same base, taking the same object. Okay? So in every mind moment, you need this understanding. Con feeling can't arise alone. It arise, arises together with consciousness and its associated mental factors. With this understanding, if you emphasize seeing the arising and perishing of feeling, it is Vedana Nupasana. In the same way, in every mind moment, there is consciousness. Okay? Consciousness. There is no mind moment which, where there is no consciousness. So, as you have practiced Nama meditation, since you practice Nama meditation, you have this and consciousness in each mind moment. So they are rising and perishing rapidly. But with this understanding, you need to emphasize seeing the arising and perishing of consciousness. What is your understanding? Consciousness can't arise alone. It arises together with the other associated mental factors. With this understanding, if you emphasize seeing the arising and perishing of consciousness, you practice Chaita Nupasana. Okay? So now the... So Pasa, contact. So there is... if Now you all see me. So my visible object impinges on your eye sensitivity at the same time to the mind door. That's why there is a contact. Even though my body doesn't enter, there is a contact. So that contact, if you emphasize on the that on that contact, pasa, it is Dhamma Lupasana. Pasa can't arise alone. It arises, it arises together with Chaita and other associated mental factors. In this way you need to pay attention. But Dhamma Lupasana is very wide. So Five khanda, okay, five clinging, five aggregates, also objects of Dhamma Nupasana. So in every mind movement, there is an object and there is its base. Base and object is materiality aggregate, rupa khanda. You get it? And also, feeling is feeling aggregate. Perception is perception aggregate. Consciousness is consciousness aggregate. Volition, volition formation is Sankara Khanda. So altogether five Khanda. If you pay attention five Khanda as an object of five Khanda in every mind movement, they are also arising and perishing, it is Vedana Nupasana. Five Khanda is just Nama Rupa, right? If you know Nama Rupa, you can practice five Khanda. And also, Twelve ayadana. Twelve ayadana. How do they translate? Twelve bases. Twelve bases. For example, in the idol, I chaku basada. Chaku basada, understand? I sensitivity. It is chakha yadana. I base. I sensitivity and I base, they are the same. Just the terms different. Okay? The meaning the same. Also, rupa yadana, rupa ra, visible object. This is rupa yadana. So, if you know 28 kinds of rupa, you can practice ayadana too, 12 days too. They are just in the 28 kinds of rupa. Okay? And also you can practice 18 dhatu, 18 elements. So what are they? In the idol, 
I I sensitivity is Chakuda Chakuda do Okay Chakuda do how do you I element Chakuda do Rupa Rupa Ramana the object which is visible object is Rupa Dadu. Rupa Dadu is color element. <laughs> okay, Rupa Dadu. And also eye consciousness element. Chaku Vinyana Dadu. So Chaku Vinyana Dadu, it is just consciousness. Okay? So Rupa Dadu, it is just a visible object. Chakku dadu, it is just its eye sensitivity. This is just nama rupa, right? That's why if you know rupa nama, you can practice all. Also Buddha taught feta. Okay? Sanyojana. Sorry? Buddha taught four noble truths. Four noble truths also objects of Dhamma Nupasana. And also five hindrances also objects of Dhamma Nupasana. Five hindrances, what are they? They are just mentality. Unwholesome mentality. That's why if you know Rupa Nama, if you attain the first insight knowledge, the knowledge of discerning, ultimate mentality and materiality, you are ready to practice for a Nupasana. But if you don't know, how can we practice? Without having developed concentration, impossible. Understand? Good. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for your compassion for coming by to Singapore again. Um, now, um, you have actually taught that to arrest the wandering mind, uh, one of the ways is to practice metta meditation mindfully and not just reciting it. Uh, could Bhante just explain more? How do you practice metta mindfully? And uh, also, um, is there uh, there's a few standard lines that you have to recite or you know you can recite any any lines that you want when you practice mindfully <laughs> thank you so when the meditators practice anapana meditation with the intention to develop concentration to develop concentration we need to develop one pointed mind on one object. But the nature of our mind is not enjoying one object. It is not our habit of mind. Our mind habits is taking many different objects one after another. This is very strong habit samsara habits. Now we are going to, you are going to develop concentration. It means you are going to develop one-pointed mind on one object. You are going to practice against your samsara habits. That's why your mind initially doesn't know how to be with one object. Your mind doesn't want to be with one object. Your mind takes one one after another. Your mind takes many different objects one after another. Also, your mind is active because all the human in the world, they are pursuing after sensuality. That's why their mind is active all the time. Morning till night. Even the dream. Okay, dream is active too. Okay? So, because of this reason, when they practice, they encounter difficulty. Because active mind makes effort become strong. If your mind is active, your, your effort will become strong. If you put much effort, 
you will not progress. Buddha said, if you put much effort, restlessness mind will arise more. If you put much effort, mindfulness can't follow. That's why restlessness mind will arise more. That's why to be able to practice meditation well, we all need calm mind. Actually, we are unfamiliar with calm mind. We are familiar with active mind, the mind that desires this and that, the mind that pursuing after this and that. This is our nature of mind. So when we practice, we need to prepare our mind. We need to make a good preparation for our meditation practice. It is to make the mind calm. So to make the, calm, the mind calm, we suggested meditators to radiate loving-kindness, metta. Also sometimes we suggested meditators to do recollection of the qualities of the Buddha sometimes. So some metta is good. Many metta is good, but sometimes they like Buddha lucidity. Anyway, whichever one we are going to practice, we need to train our mind. So when we suppose we are going to make the mind calm, radiating metta, so we need to radiate metta mindfully. Mindfully, not in a way of reciting. So Singaporean understand or not, I don't know. I want to give an example. In our in in Myanmar, so housewife, they used to do chanting in their home. Some housewife, this is their daily practice. Maybe once a day or twice a day. So they enter the shrine room, they pay respect to the Buddha and they do chanting. Samanda Chakawali Su Adaraga Chandu Tivata looking here and there. Okay? But I mean they are very smart, very skillful chanting because they are memorized, right? Yeah, they are unmindful. Okay? Like all of you, one, two, three, four, five can 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 count. Okay, without mistake. Because this is what we are used to. Not that way. Not that way. And also May I be well and happy, may I be well and happy, may I be well and happy, not this way. <laughs> okay? So wishing oneself to be well and happy. So with understanding on the sentence that you are going to use in your metta. Suppose you, you want to apply that sentence, may I be free from danger. So you should mindfully radiate with the wishing oneself to be free from danger. So mindfully, please do. But one important thing, this is the problems of many meditators when they practice metta. They expect something. Because of practicing metta meditation, they think they are going to be something. If they expect something, they cannot practice metta meditation. So I need to remind them, don't expect anything. Don't think that you are going to be something because of radiating metta. Don't think that you are going to free something. All these are unnecessary things. Just with pure and clear mind. Mindfully radiate metta without any expectation. Whether you are going to be well and happy is not your meta. Your meta is to radiate mindfully. The I be well and happy. Concentrate on what you are doing for five minutes. And then you are going to radiate meta to someone you respect. You are going to radiate meta towards him or her. May he or may she be well and happy. May he or may she be well and happy. Whether she is or whether he is going to be well and happy is not your matter. You don't need to expect anything. Only with pure heart, wishing him, wishing her to be well and happy, you should radiate metta. 
If you do mindfully like this, within a short time, your mind becomes calm. This is a way you only need to practice. Some, they, they complain me. They complain themselves and in a way of complaining me too. <laughs> One day, I cannot practice metta. As if I have no metta at all. Even I cannot really metta towards me. Why? They expect some emotional feeling. Because they don't feel. That's why they think that they have no metta. No, you have metta. <laughs> okay, only because you have expectation. That's why you cannot do well. And then they went back and do. They come and report. One day. Now it is fine. Okay? So we all need to do with pure heart and mindfully and it will be fine. Okay? I have two questions. Uh, first question is uh, when a person attain uh, Sutapan if uh, he, he don't continue practice, that means he lost his concentration until the end of life, he passed away. Then there's another second scenario. If the person, uh, after he attained Sotapanna, then in the later part of his lifetime, he, he has this brain disease, then he lost his memory. <laughs> 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 then he passed away. Oh. Then the next one, <laughs> Oh, you are, then you, the next one, he, has, he is a Sotapan, <laughs> then uh, he practiced many journey, but he didn't uh, obtain the second part of fruition, so he passed away. Any different in these three scenarios? You are manipulating. <laughs> <laughs> is he... Is he, okay, I will tell you. Is he going to... Uh, any, any different in, the, in his future assistant? You worry much about. No, I, I'm curious. I'm curious to curious know. About. Mm. That's why you manipulate. <laughs> so sort of pana. No, I have to make my question clear. It's not my yes, yes. Yeah, I will give you an answer clearly. Don't worry. <laughs> Please make a thing first, <laughs> and then you will see that sort of pana are those who will not leave their meditation behind. Because they have the most superior object where they can rest. Okay? Do you understand? Uh, what are you referring to? Most uh, superior because object? Because they can enter fruition knowledge when they want. Taking Nibbana as an object. Even the Sotapanna, the first... Sotapanna. Because part and fruition knowledge arises taking Nibbana as an object. I thought it's only third and fourth. No, no, no. Without, even first. Without Nibbana, they cannot attain part and fruition knowledge. Part, every part and fruition knowledge take Nibbana as an object. Part knowledge arises only once. Fruition knowledge followed by. But after attaining path and fruition knowledge, in the future, any time, if they want to enter fruition, they can enter. Even when they are walking, they can enter. Even when they are sitting, they can enter. Even when they are standing, they can enter. Even when they are lying, they can enter. Okay? Like, like a mother who needs to take care of his sons or daughter because they are still young. They, he or she take care. But he also take care of himself too. Okay? He will may, maybe he may sometimes be busy, but he may he will not leave his care. Okay? So you don't need to worry. Then what happened if he lost his memory in no, a later no. part of his life? No, they will not happen it will not happen to me. A person who have attained the first uh, uh, path he will not lose memory, his memory yes, yes, will yes. not Because they are not ordinary, <laughs> they are not <laughs> ordinary people. Don't afraid. Okay, yeah. please try to make a thing first. Okay? <laughs> very encouraging. Yeah. Because I always very forward. My husband said, next time I lost my memory. 
Oh, my you memory. Were, you, were, you were lost what you have learned, <laughs> but you may not. You were not. You you will not forget your attainment. <laughs> okay, this is direct knowledge, not by committing into memory. Okay, sanya can be lost. Time and according to time and condition, unshakable faith cannot be destroyed by anybody. Okay. If you want to destroy, also you cannot. You have no any intention to destroy because you can't do. Only you will enjoy fruition knowledge. Okay, when you want. Okay, if you feel tired off, you have a place to rest. Rest. Good. Very good. Mm. <laughs> Then second, <laughs> second question. Uh, Monday said when the object. Impinge the five cent door. You also impinge the my door. So if I I sit there, I watch TV, I eating. If I sit there, I watch TV, I eating. Then I taste the nice taste. I listen to the music. Then all the all the five cent door is in, impinge. So my my door, how how did they care? <laughs> Because why can't you get that? Must be very busy. <laughs> you worry about. It. <laughs> I'm wondering how 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 it works. Oh, so mentality, they are very tremendously very. They are they are very quick. They are very rapid. So they have great ability. Not all at once can impinge. So when you are watching television, you hear, you see, you are eating, you taste, okay? so you smell too what you are eating, as if all impinges at once. No, cannot impinge at once. So like now you pay attention to this, at that time you don't know this. Okay, so when you pay attention to this, you don't know this. Application mind on one object. We can apply one object at once. Mind can't know two things at the same time. Hearing once, smelling another, tasting another, seeing another. But mentality very quick. As so I do, so quick. So Hearing, seeing, smelling. It's not five in one. No five. Don't worry. I can do. You can't do. But this is a written question. After a yogi had attained the path and fruition knowledges, that is, after one becomes a sotapanna or higher, does he or she still need to practice under the guidance of a teacher, or can he or she continue practicing herself for? Higher attainment. If he or she is very determined, can practice. Okay. Anyway, those who know how to practice samatha vipassana, even though they haven't attained, they can practice by themselves without the teacher at the time, because the teacher has already guided how to practice. But according to our experiences, under the guidance of a teacher and without the teacher, their determination changed. So, as you all know, there are many demands. Sometimes, some of my disciples, after they practice samatha vipassana. At that time, there are a lot of demands among Buddhists. One day they want to propagate Dharma too. One day they want to teach others too. So what do they want to do? They need. They want to do learning. Okay, they want to. They want to do learning. They want to gain learning knowledge. So they are thinking. Where to learn? From whom to learn? So it disturbs their meditation. 
They know how to practice Samatha Vipassana, but they haven't attained path and fruition knowledge. At that time, I didn't allow them. I told them, what is your purpose of practicing meditation? To be famous? To be well known? Or to make oneself free from suffering in the four four states? Now you haven't prevented yourself from falling into four four states. Why do you want to do for the good of others? Now please do first. After that you can do too, you can do a lot. Okay? After attaining as I told all of you, Samma Vihari Yom. They can teach others to attain path and fruition knowledge. If they haven't attained, sometimes even they don't know themselves how to continue practicing for their attainment. That's why they cannot they cannot firmly instruct meditators. They stay feed out about their practice. If anybody, anyone who hasn't attained path and fruition knowledge, they haven't removed all their doubt. They still have doubt about the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, past life, present life, future life, karma and its result, three training, because they haven't attained unshakable faith. That's why I encourage them. I don't force them. I can't encourage them. Because of this reason, they continue practice, they benefit a lot. After that, if they don't want to continue practicing under my guidance, I don't mind. They can do by themselves. If they continue, if they want to continue practicing under my guidance, I will help them. If they practice under the guidance of the teacher, they will engage practicing meditation. If they don't practice under the guidance of their former teacher, and they will they will fulfill the demands of many. This is the main reason. Not that they can't, they can practice well. Okay? Oh, time passed quickly. Okay. Brothers, this is one last question. This is attachment to right, wrong practices. And also praying. Buddhism is not praying system, believing system, worshipping system. If a certain Buddhist ordained monk teach you, teaches you just by praying, just by worshipping, just by believing, you can expect for the realization of the Dharma. So it will not be right practices. Okay? So if you do praying, worshipping, believing, that this is wholesome. This is wholesome. With this, you are going to be reborn in a good realm. But only the attitude is important. Your attitude changes. Well, just by doing so, I can make free from suffering. This is wrong practices. Asking forgiveness for just by asking someone to forgive you because of the wrong actions you have done. Please forgive me. And someone is going to forgive you because of asking this. This is wrong practices. Okay? These are all the attachment to wrong practices. Also, in times of the Buddha, there are those who dock. Dog, dog ascetic and cow ascetic. Those who practice like a dog, 
Those who eat like a dog, those who go like a dog, so they have this belief. By doing so, they can make free from suffering. This is attachment to wrong practices. Okay? Thank you very much, Bhante. Um, this, is, um, this is Bhante's last uh, sharing before Bhante goes back to Myanmar tomorrow. And uh, also, this is the end of the year. It is New Year's Eve and New Year's coming. Uh, so maybe at this point, uh, can we very humbly uh, and uh, respectfully ask Bhante if Bhante could perhaps give us a one final admonishment, um, some something for us to reflect upon, maybe something rouse the sense of urgency or something for us to look forward to what we should do for the new year. So uh, can Bhante kindly give us this uh, very uh, powerful admonishment this time. There are many things to do in life as a lay person. Those many things are mostly not for the benefit of all of you. Mostly they are for the better of all of you. The reason is because you are led by your defilements in the pursuit of sensuality. That's why the root cause is not wholesome. That's why even though there are many things for all of you to do, they are not for the benefit of you. But they, you all leave aside what is the most important for all of you. It is practicing meditation. Don't do like this. Only when the teacher came, you practice. When the teacher go back, you left everything behind. Okay? Engage practicing regularly in the, where, wherever you are. So every day meditate. Every day. Make a schedule. So make one activity in your many activity. It is practicing meditation. You can spend a lot of time for other activities which is harmful for all of you. Why did why couldn't you or why can't you put a certain activity which is really good for all of you. So put a certain activity, one activity which is practicing meditation. And also if it is possible in the on the holiday like weekend. So at least one day if you are calm and practice here, request Sibande, request Seado, you would like to practice one day retreat. Okay, in this way you all should accumulate barami. At home you cannot do. Even weekend, you, even though you are determined you will not do. So ma gather here and then meditate. And then the teacher will not run away. <laughs> okay? This is also a way of a way of sustaining the teachings of the Buddha. If the teachers see that oh, Singaporeans are very lazy, <laughs> they are very active in their worldly pursuit, but they are very lazy in meditation practice, the teacher will not be happy staying here. He will go somewhere. <laughs> okay? That's right. This is also what you all need to request. Okay? So in this way, everyday practice, this is the most important thing. This will not harm you. This will provide you for the realization of the Dharma in this very life. 
if it is not in this very life, in the near future. But what you are doing the whole life since you were young, they are not providing for the realization of the Dharma. They are providing you to fall into the four four states. Okay? So may you all be able to make use of this precious life and may you all be able to engage practicing in this very life and may you all attain at least first path and fruition in this very life. Share Mary's tongue. Dummy Pongyang, Dummy Waham Hotu, Waham Hotu, Hotu, Mama Punya Bagan, Saba Satanam, Bajimi, Te Sabi, Te Sabi, Punya Bagan, Labantu, Sadu, Sadu, Thank you very much for coming to Singapore despite all the busy schedule and, and uh, all the tiredness. Uh, thank you for giving us uh, this very precious, uh, deep and profound teaching. Uh, Bhante will be leaving tomorrow morning. So um, um, there's an opportunity we'd like to send Bhante off or the offer breakers uh, at 6.30 tomorrow morning at uh, uh, Changi Airport Terminal 2 staff canteen. You can offer breakfast dana for uh, Bhante if you wish to. Then Bhante will be leaving uh, on the 7.55 flight from Singapore to Yangon. So we wish Bhante uh, good health, uh, long life, uh, and also a safe and smooth journey back. May Bhante always have the right conditions to teach and guide all the sentient beings. May all follow Bhante's teachings and be able to practice and uh, realize Nibbana. May Bhante too have all the right supporting conditions for Bhante's own practice at a, an appropriate time according to Bhante's aspiration May Bhante wish the complete cessation of all suffering. Now, um, we will invite Bhante Janaka to join us. Then uh, there's an opportunity for everyone to offer uh, hopes and requisites to the Sangha members. What we will do is after after we have offered your 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 requisite ropes and, uh, ropes and requisites, please kindly stay back. When we finish, then we will ask for forgiveness to end the year on a pure note. Okay, and then also uh, we will share all the merits that we have accumulated.
Let us uh, all be Nanjali. Let us respectfully and sincerely pay respect to the Venerable Sangha. Thank you. 